This is the fourth video on chronic hepatitis B and we'll discuss treatment. Treatment can help to reduce liver cell damage and help to prevent the consequent scarring of fibrosis, liver cirrhosis, and liver cancer. Hepatitis B is not curable, but it is treatable. There are seven types of antiviral medication that have been approved. We shall only discuss three of these antiviral drugs because the remainder four are seldom used now. Two of these medicines are taken by mouth while the other is given by injection. The first medication we will talk about is a drug called tenofovir. This medication is given by mouth. It is a potent and safe drug that is highly effective against the hepatitis B virus. The virus will disappear from the blood in most patients after a few months of treatment. It can be used for patients who are starting treatment for the first time or those who have been on other antiviral medicines before. Resistance to the drug has not been seen. There are two versions of tenofovir, tenofovir alafenamide and tenofovir disoproxyl fumarate. Tenofovir alfafenamide is preferred as it has a better side effect profile. The second drug is antikavir, which is also given by mouth. It is also potent and safe. Resistance to the drug has been reported, but it is uncommon. Often, patients may need to be on these antiviral medicines for years. The third drug is called pegylated interferon. This drug is given by injection. The advantage is that the treatment is given for only one year and is more effective than other drugs in clearing the HBS antigen. The downside is that it is given by injection and has a lot of side effects. The next question is how long to treat? For phase 2 patients, treatment is stopped when HBE AG is negative and the antibody anti-HBE is positive. For phase 4, treatment is stopped when the patient reaches the last stage where the HBS antigen is negative and the antibody, the anti-HBS is positive. Treatment might have to go on for many years. In cirrhosis of liver, treatment is lifelong. Lifelong antiviral treatment is recommended because occasionally the virus may reactivate even if the patient has cleared the virus. We will now discuss how often should a patient follow up with a doctor. For phase 1 and 3, it is recommended that follow-ups are done every 6 months. For phase 2 and 4, it is recommended that follow-ups are done every three months. During the follow-up, the doctor might carry out investigations which have been mentioned earlier. These investigations would include blood tests, for example, ALT, HBEAG, NTHBE, HBSAG, NTHBS, HBV DNA, and the liver cancer marker alpha fetoprotein. The other test that's done is an ultrasound of the liver. 
patients who have cleared the virus and that they are no more carriers still need to see the doctor at six monthly intervals as there is still an increased risk of liver cancer. General aspects of management of hepatitis has been discussed in the video on hepatitis. We will now discuss who is at risk of liver cancer in chronic hepatitis B. The first group is those who are 40 years of age or older. Secondly, males are at a higher risk compared to females. Thirdly, if there's a lot of scarring of fibrosis, there's a greater chance of liver cancer if the patient has a lot of fibrosis. However, some patients without fibrosis can also develop liver cancer. If the patient concomitantly has other types of liver disease like chronic hepatitis C, fatty liver or any other liver condition. Also, if there is heavy alcohol consumption and smokers are at an increased risk. The best way to prevent hepatitis B is by ensuring that everyone is vaccinated. In the majority of countries, hepatitis B vaccine is given to the newborn at birth. Three doses are given at 0, 1 and 6 months. If a mother is a hepatitis B carrier, additional passive immunization is given at birth. Adults, particularly those at high risk, should also be given a three-dose vaccination regime over six months. A significant number of vaccinations in adults are not successful after the first course. If so, the three-dose vaccination should be repeated. It will be successful in 50 to 70% of people who have failed with the first dose. If it fails again, there is no point trying a third time.